So it's Monday, folks. So you know what that means. It's the weekend sales. How much money have I made over the weekend? Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So it's been a good weekend. Very, very good weekend. 15 sales in total, which is very good for me. Uh, that's the best I've ever done in a weekend. So I'm going to go through all the stuff I've sold. Uh, the things that are in the other room already packed. Um, I'm going to put on the screen. Um, it's from Palette. So um, they are all tools. So I'm going to go through them first uh, because they have been sold all over the place. So I got a tools palette just at the start of the year. It's not been very good for profit wise. Um, a lot of stuff was broke. So I just reduced a lot of the prices. But some of the stuff that was good, I have sold this weekend. One of the things is an extension lead. Somebody in my local area wanted it, sold that for £25. So that is a great profit. How I've done the stuff on the pallets is I basically divide it by the number of things on the pallet by the cost of what the pallet cost for me. Then I sold a Spears and Jackson uh, power washer these are retailing about 150 to 180 in the shops but this was used so i couldn't sell it for that i just sold it just like literally about an hour ago for 60 pound cash in hand so that's another big chunk of profit also i sold a roby jigsaw which is in brand new condition i had it on ebay for 110 to start off with then I've reduced it. Um, somebody made an offer for 70, so I thought I'm just going to get rid of it. 70 quid is 70 quid in the end of the day. So I sold it for 70 quid. I probably made about the same again, probably about 10, 20 pounds on that. Like I said, tools are really hard to sell. If you can sell them like without fees and that are so much better. Um, but yeah, but I've got a couple of things I'm waiting for. I've got two um, electric lawnmowers from Karsha, brand new, you know, so... They're like £300 each, but I'm going to wait until it starts warming up because I'm not selling now because no one will buy them. So the rest of the stuff is all in this mess of a bedroom. Like I keep on saying, I need to sort this out this week. It is, it is getting to a joke. I can't even move. Literally, where I'm sitting now is the only space. <laughs> I can't move at all. There's a door bit of space there but I need that space to open a door so I'm going to go through the things that I sold this weekend and the first thing is I went and I oh, where is he where is he come here sold a uh, Mr Tickles yep it's a vintage Mr Tickles I went to Dudley I didn't film that because it was rubbish um, <laughs> and I didn't get much from there um, but I saw this for 50p and I thought it's got to get more than 50p got to at least make a fiver out of it sold it for four quid so a little bit of profit but I sold that on vintage so obviously no fees next I got a bag from my shop that is one of my favorite shops charity shops League of Nations and I got this it's a signature bag and it is basically where the place is is it called Newport you might have heard it. It's a very, like, I would say quite rich area. Uh, they've got a, a boarding school called um, Harper Adams. And they're very into horses. So there's a lot of horse stuff. You know, not not like what I really want to see, like boots and uh, horse stuff. Um, but also nice bags. I mean, this is not a designer bag. But I got it for a pound and I sold it for £12. I had it for 15 uh, it got knocked down to 12, so I thought 12 quid off a pound is a good profit. Next, I bought a bundle of Nerf guns, and the, they worked out after I divided them by the guns. Um, it works out about £2.05p per gun. And I got about 15 with, I sold a magazine, and I've sold a bundle of like accessories. They've already gone, they've gone before, already gone. But I got this gun in one of them, and there was lots of these guns about, which are like the, the standard blue and white colour, but none of these was on the internet at all. I couldn't find any. Couldn't even find the name. Um, and it is got the name, you know, it's a dual 
rogue, that's it, rogue cut. But like I said, not in this colour, it's like a marble effect. So it's a bit more rare, so I thought I'd put it up a bit more. Um, and I sold it for £10, yeah. So £8 profit off that. So, you know, I'm already in profit with them Nerf guns by, you know, that is pure profit now. It's paid for. Um, so every other gun I've got, and I've still got some big guns, I mean, some really good guns to sell. Next is another one from the League of Nations, which is obviously, it's such an like old fashioned, it's, it's like really old fashioned. And if you do go to charity shops, you know the ones where they don't look on the internet, you know, if they see something that's got a name, like I'm like, Rule Dalton, yes, they'll put it up because they've heard of it. But most of the stuff is like a pound, two pound, you know, a set might be about four pounds if it's really nice. But I found this and I went, that is really nice. You know, it's a biscuit um, barrel and it was for two pound. No name, nothing. So I thought, well, for two pound, it's a biscuit barrel. You, you could be paying 20 pound in a shop for this, maybe 30 pound. So it's all intact, there's nothing smashed. So I've got to make sure I wrap that up good. Sold it for 30 pounds. Hopefully it doesn't smash because my last thing I sent off, which was abroad to Germany, arrived in the post smashed. So um, I don't post my stuff, my mom does because she likes posting, you know, and packing. Um, and she didn't pack it secure enough um, inside she didn't put nothing inside so obviously it broke but they chuck things around you know they don't even show you on ceramics so they know what they're doing with it you know they know they break it and know they chuck it about but yeah 28 pound profit after posting packaging yeah so all good so next I had this. I bought this from another one of my shops, which I really like. It's a bit similar to that one, but it's in my actual town. And I saw this. Where I live is I live near a very famous bridge called Iron Bridge. So it's full of craft, cast iron works, everything. And I saw this outside. Can you see it? If you know what that is, comment down below. It's the Sistine it's not the Sistine, it's the Leonardo da Vinci Last Supper painting, but it's been done on cast iron piece of metal. Um, and I tried to find how much this was. I put it on for 200 to start off with, um, just because I thought it's a good piece. You know, it's iron bridge, it's cast iron, it's a very famous painting, and I was getting no interest. Then somebody offered me 50 and I, I turned it down. This is like the same week because I thought, nah, not, not worth it. Found out that it's not actually worth as much as I thought. It's worth probably about 50 quid and it probably is worth about 50 quid and it's a, because it's a print, probably, I think that what they did is they've got the original in Iron Bridge which is like a couple of hundred years old and they make reproductions of it in an obviously to sell um i haven't actually been down there to see how much the reproductions go for but i'm thinking they must sell for about over 50 quid anyway i got it for five pound but i sold it for 35 pound so after post and packaging i've got i've made 30 quid um and 30 quid's 30 quid you know off a fiver it's a big bulky thing as well it's done it's not much space, but, you know, it's nice to get rid of it because it's something different. And I know now some cast on the iron things do sell. Um, I thought I was going to keep it forever. Next is my best, best buys of the week. The best sales of the weekend. And this is and the main, the main part of this video this is the thumbnail and it is regrettably the team I hate the most I'm a Liverpool fan and I sold three Man United tops I sold a red one 
home one obviously they're not brand new ones obviously they're from different years of early 2000s i sold this one which is an umbro one they're all in good condition but that is the worth the most because it's an umbro and then i sold the away black one and i was looking and i i, I thought oh well I sold a lot of my dad's stuff, who was a Man United fan, um, when he died on Vinted, and I sold him for hardly nothing, you know, just need to get rid of the clutter, you know, I sold him for like five, ten pounds, and I'm regretting that now, because on eBay, they sell anything from, depending on the age, of course, and the quality, anything from 30 to 70 quid, and yes, the two, the black one and the red one, for which are Vodafone ones, they sold for £35 each. And the Umbro one sold for £50. Which is a great profit. Because I bought each shirt for £1 at a car boot. So, the profit margin on that is... Uh, uh, it's over a hundred pound of profit you know and my face if i had a live reaction of my face when i sold these i was like Woo -hoo, it's the only time ever i've been happy about a man united thing <laughs> so yes these are a very very good thing to look out for I mean, if you can find any sort of sports memorabilia or anything to do, it doesn't have to be football, it could be basketball. Obviously, certain clubs are going to get more than others. Uh, obviously, the older, the better quality. Um, you're going to get some mega books. I, I think the older Man United one, if you know football, the with a sharp on it, where Eric Cantona went that era, they're going for about £100. Hundred pounds. So if you've got one of them or you find one of them, get it on eBay and sell it. You, you're gonna make a fortune. And people don't really think about this on car boots, you know, unless you're a clothes dealer. You know, these are probably one of the biggest profit margins you're gonna get in anything. These are huge profit margin. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just, I could, I, it makes me smile. And I, I, <laughs> for Man United. To make me smile it is crazy and obviously i have been everywhere now been searching for Liverpool. i had old liverpool tops uh but they just i chucked them out and they just fallen apart um and yeah <laughs> that's what i'm going to be looking out for after that so also i went to an auction last week and i bought a few things i didn't film it uh i'm going to be going to one a bit later on today because it's viewing day and then the auctions are on Tuesday. So um, if there's anything interesting on my video, it uh, go around the local charity shop because I'm not going to be doing much work like going around this week. I need to sort out the shed uh, because obviously if I buy more stuff, I'm not going to have nowhere else. The other room where I sleep in is also full up on one side and downstairs around the TV is full. It, it's getting, it's getting a joke now and it's, it's, you know, it's just, I just want the house to look like a house. I don't want it to look like a junkyard shop, you know. So I bought um, a selection of magazines, old comics and all that. Lot, and it had this in there, a Beano issue um, comic from 1966, July the 23rd. It's in okay condition. You know, there's a little bit of ripping and tearing. But for this little magazine, I got four pound and that's how much you sell but for the, all the magazines i've got some dandy ones i've got um, an annuals couple of annuals a selection of other ones which i've got on for bundles i paid a fiver i think yeah i paid a fiver for the uh the whole lot and i've got my money back just off almost got my money back off the one magazine so when the other ones do sell i'll I'll be on profit. I'm not going to make big profit off that. Um, I bought it because I've never been to an auction and I wanted to buy something. Uh, the stuff I wanted actually went up for too much. So I was like, no, I'm not buying that because I wouldn't have made no profit. So I bought a few things. I bought like obviously a little job lot as well. 
which I've sold another thing. And that is these. Um, it's two vintage boxes. I mean, back in the day when these was like new and made, I mean, that would box would have probably been fetching quite a bit of money. I mean, I, I don't know. I was going to say tongue and groove and all this stuff, pretending I know what I'm on about. But it's cross actually, you can feel it. It's been like, I don't know. Comment down below if you know what I mean. Um, but it's got all sewing stuff, vintage sewing stuff, you know, like needles, threads, whatever other things in that one. And then this one is a box of cotton reels. And I mean, there's a lot, and there must be over 20 in there. And I sold it for £15. I thought, you know, I don't know the price of it. I'm thinking, I just wanted to, to get rid of it. I didn't want to overprice it. And I thought, well, for the contents in the boxes itself, it's 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 worth it, you know, cotton reel, you know, think about that, about a quid each. These are vintage ones. So you're getting your money's worth. You're getting a good deal. So for the bundle was in this like little two boxes I paid £22 for. It wasn't actually for it, it's for some other stuff in there, which I haven't sold yet. But it's, you're looking around £4 per item. Uh, sold these for £15, so I've made a tenner off them. Um, and the other things are better than this, you know. The other things are potentially could be worth a lot of money. It's just, I'm not an antique dealer. I don't know what they are. I've got, I've got an ivory, um, ebony um, elephant in there. I've got also um, a little Scandinavian little pelican thing, which I've looked up and apparently they're worth a lot of money, worth about £300 on sites. Uh, I've, you know, I've put them on for a lot of money. If they get attention, they get attention, you know, but if they don't, I'll just knock them down. I'm, I'm going to make my money back on this anyway. Next, I sold this oh an xbox i haven't tested it i put it on vinted somebody offered me eight pounds so bought it for a quid so seven quid profit easy quick sell electrical everything to do with gaming just sells straight away i would suggest do not put it on ebay um because of the fees put it on vinted first and then put it on ebay if it sells on ebay then fine enough but vinted you don't you don't have to worry about fees you know it's just pure profit whatever you put it on for you're going to make pure profit so the last thing i got if is it the last thing is it so much stuff I, I've, I've, I've lost count um yeah i think it is yeah the last thing i got was this and it's another xbox thing and it's the dimensions lego um xbox version and I know what these are, you know, you can pick up the, the figures, you know, with the, the, the Disney Infinity ones, there's loads of them sort of things going about. But to get this in the shop, you're looking about £150, um, brand new. So I knew it was going to be worth something as long as all the pieces are. It was in one of the shops I'm going to later, and I think it was four £4.99, uh, but it said without the game all the pieces there two pieces were missing which are basically you can't they're not important parts you know it doesn't wreck the structure it's like a little dome thing where and then you stick your your lego character on but it's also got extra pieces so it's got some i think it's i don't know what it's called some cartoon and a car uh and i thought that makes up for it you know the game you i could i was thinking about buying the game i could get it for like seven quid to ten quid but i thought what's the point just knock it down somebody offered me on ebay for 25 pound so take off the fees and the the cost of it so which is probably about a tenner so i made 15 pounds out of it easy quick buy obviously stuff like this sells quick anything to do with games you know stuff like consoles games you know if if you can get stuff for cheap it's worth getting so i sold 15 items over the weekend which is my best so far um 
on average, give or take a couple of pounds, it costs about six to two pounds for the stuff I've, you know, I've, I've got here. Sale wise, before fees and all that, because obviously I had to take some of them off for, for fees and other things are sold on Vineyard and, you know, in person, it was £406. After reductions off the things that sold on eBay, I made £330.62p for three days. And that is the best I've ever done so far, you know, since I've been calculating it. I've only been doing it for a couple of weeks, calculating it, but that is the best so far I have done. Um, I'm really, really thinking about palette wise, it's not really worth. I'm gonna do a video about that. Um, I feel like palettes, unless you get something really good, like obviously your Lego or toys, which are very sought after, it's not worth it um, because obviously you are risking it, buying it because you don't know what's coming. You know, it could be broken and you, you're losing your money. Um, charity shops, car boots, you know what you're buying, you know, unless it's electrical, you know, a car boots, you, you're risking it, but you're only paying a couple of quid, you know. What's the difference between a couple of quid a car boot or spending, what, £500 on a returns pallet, which could have the same sort of stuff on there and it could be broke and you're losing a hell of a lot more money. A couple of quid you're not really going to miss. So the whole weekend has been great. Them Man United tops, thank you very much, Man United. I mean, it was good to get rid of you as well because I saw them, I, I bought them because I thought, you know, I, they're going to they're quid each. They've got to be worth 10 quid. I knew I could sell them for 10 quid each. But I never knew I could sell them for that much. So that is one of the things I'm going to be hunting down today. If see if I can find any sort of sports memorabilia. Um, and if you have ever made a good profit like that on any sort of t-shirts, tops from sports, comment down below and let me know. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this, obviously hit that thumbs up button. And remember to subscribe if you are new and say hello.